the player class in the plugin has been made as flexible as possible to allow for many different types of inputs. As I said, we've got eight different types of game examples or templates to use in the plugin, and all of those derive from a single BP underscore player base, which is housed in the common folder. This class handles all of the most generic functionality that most endless runner games tend to implement, such as managing the state of play, whether it's enabled, disabled, taking the player input, checking for collisions, spawning and respawning, showing effects, and showing things such as the invincibility flash, and much more. On top of this, things like the material instance for the current playable class will also be stored here, and this is done by calling a function, the store material instance from the event begin play. I've made a point of mentioning this one because the function can be a little bit confusing and I've had to work it this way to get around some strange behavior with inside of Unreal and setting material instances. So this function will call a global function library to check against the validity of either the skeletal mesh, the paper flipbook, static mesh, or paper sprite on the given actor. This will check if one of those are valid. Hopefully you're only gonna have one of these plugged in. Everything else should be turning uh, either null, as in there's no asset or isn't even being passed in, as you can see in this example here. You can, of course, override this in the child classes, but by default, I've assumed that we're gonna use a skeletal mesh or a flip book. This will then get the current component that is valid and take the material instance from this, and that will be stored later for things again, like the invincibility flashes, where we need to update the colors of that material instance. It's also worth noting that the base player doesn't handle actual input. This is pretty much the, like I said, a parent class for everything that I've used in the other templates. So this is just a static kind of collection of the base information that's going to be needed, such as the colliders, the functions that will be getting called, but it doesn't need to know how they're going to be called uh, because this class itself will not actually be used in a game. It's going to be de the derived child classes of this getting used. So as an example, all of the input, if you wanted to find out how things move, how to update the input bindings, you'd go to, if we take a look at the Roadrunner, we can go to the Player Roadrunner class, and the input is in its own event graph, just to keep this nice and tidy. And this is just taking a lane-based movement where we're pressing left or right, and we are moving a certain amount of units in that direction. And we've got the same thing set up for touch input, to automatically account for things like playing on mobile devices. Just calling the same move function and deciding whether we're moving left or right. And this is going to apply in the event graph some lerping animations to kind of ease the movement, make it look a little bit better, play any effects that you want to. So all of these specific and unique things are being handled in the child classes. And that will be the same for any of the game templates. So if you perhaps didn't want your game to look the same as I've set up in any of the maps, but you do like the movement and you want to see how that's done, then that's one of the intentions here. You can completely remove entire things from the project, but you can still find maybe useful information about how an animation was done, how part of a movement setup was done, and things like that. So hopefully, even if you don't use all eight of the template games, something from each of them will be useful in some way.